Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back once again with our sponsored series from Kensington and today we're taking a look at their Thunderbolt dock. This is their SD5200T and we'll be talking about some of the differences between Thunderbolt 3 and USB Type-C. They use the same connector, but they are very different from each other. So we'll talk about what you need to have on your PC for this to work and some of the benefits you might get from using a Thunderbolt dock in this video. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Kensington. They reviewed this content before it was posted, and I worked with them to generate and develop uh, the topics that we are covering in this video. So let's get to it and see what this Thunderbolt dock can do. Now before you plug in your dock, I do suggest making sure your computer has all of its latest updates. If you're on Windows, this includes not only the Windows updates, but also your manufacturer updates that you can get through their update application if there is one, or on your computer manufacturer's website. So inside the box, you're going to find the docking station itself. You're also going to get a rather large power supply here because this dock can not only get you all of these ports delivered to your laptop with a single cable, it can also charge and power your laptop through this single cable. So you can walk up to your desk, uh, plug this one cable into your laptop, get power going to it, get your displays active, and get access to all of the ports that you see here. It's really convenient. Now you are going to notice that the Thunderbolt 3 cable it comes with is rather short. Uh, these cables are uh, very expensive in longer lengths, so you do get a good amount of length on the power adapter, and you also have the option to purchase a mounting bracket for the dock itself so you can uh, mount it to the back of a monitor if you wish. So you do have some options as to where you mount it. You can buy additional cables, but just make sure you're getting a Thunderbolt 3 cable and not a USB Type-C cable. We're going to talk about the differences between Thunderbolt and USB Type-C in a minute. Now the Thunderbolt dock is completely plug and play. Everything will come up automatically when you plug the cable in for the first time. Now for ports here, we have a gigabit ethernet jack for plugging it into your network. This is a standard USB 3.0 port for uh, connecting hard drives and keyboards and other standard USB devices. You have two audio connectors here. One is an input for a microphone. The other is an output for headphones. It's got full digital audio built in. You have a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk so you can uh, secure it from being stolen. You have two Thunderbolt ports here. Uh, this port connects to your computer. This is where the power gets delivered to the computer as well. And then you can daisy chain additional Thunderbolt devices uh, through this port here. So if you have Thunderbolt video capture devices or a Thunderbolt drive array, uh, you can daisy chain them off of the port here and uh, not lose any functionality, even if your computer only has a single Thunderbolt port. You get all these ports and then you can still, again, chain your other Thunderbolt devices to this one. And uh, this is also backwards compatible with USB Type-C. Uh, so you can plug in hard drives and display adapters to that port as well. Lots of flexibility there. Uh, right here is your display port output, and this is what you would connect your uh, external monitors to. And we'll show you some displays hooked up to this in a second. Now, I've been using a uh, display port to HDMI cable on this one, and that's been working fine. And you'll notice here, too, that there is a DP++ here uh, printed above the port, and that's because this supports uh, display port MST, which allows you to run a single cable to a monitor and then daisy chain another monitor to the one you directly connected to the dock here. Uh, this feature, though, is only supported in Windows. It doesn't work on the Mac. Uh, so if you do have a Mac and you want to connect two displays up, uh, you will need something like this, which is a, a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. And this adapter plugs into uh, that extra Thunderbolt port there to get you two displays on the Mac. But if you've got an MST-compatible laptop and uh, MST-compatible displays, this is the way to go. Uh, this dock can drive a 5K display, or you can drive two 4K 60 hertz displays on this. Uh, by comparison, the USB Type-C docks can only uh, give you a single 4K display at 60 hertz, or you can run uh, two 4K displays at 30 hertz. So you do get uh, more bandwidth out of these ports for uh, running more demanding display applications. And if you have a Thunderbolt compatible PC, uh, this is probably the way to go. Now you do have a couple more ports here on the front, just a standard USB port here and a data only only USB Type-C port on the front. So your display adapters won't work on here, but all of your USB Type-C devices will. 
Uh, these run at the uh, USB Gen 1 speeds, a maximum of 5 gigabits per second, but uh, these ports will work fine for hard drives and that kind of thing. Uh, they will power your USB devices, but uh, this is not a power delivery port for a laptop here on the front. So just consider this a data-only port for getting everything going. Now, before we go any further, we do need to look at the differences between USB Type-C and Thunderbolt. And what's confusing for a lot of consumers is that the ports are exactly the same, but inside they work a lot differently. So I've got two Windows laptops here on the desk. Uh, this top one is running with a USB Type-C connector, and the bottom one here has a Thunderbolt connector. And the only way to know that the bottom computer has a Thunderbolt connector is that it is labeled with this little lightning icon on there to indicate that it is, in fact, Thunderbolt 3 compatible. And what's even crazier is that this Thunderbolt 3 cable will fit on this USB Type-C equipped laptop, but if we were to plug the dock into it, nothing would happen because Thunderbolt 3 is a very different technology from USB-C. The reason why you might want to look at getting a Thunderbolt dock over a USB-C dock, though, is that Thunderbolt is a lot faster, in fact, up to four times faster. It can transit uh, 40 gigabits per second of data across that little cable that you connect up to this versus only 10 gigabits per second on USB-C. So that means you can uh, just get everything working faster at the same time and uh, driving higher resolution displays at higher frame rates. So if you are uh, looking for a dock and you know you've got a Thunderbolt port on there, I do think the Thunderbolt docks are are the best option. It's kind of a future-proofing thing because as you upgrade your laptop, uh, you won't need to upgrade your dock necessarily to get more functionality down the road. Now, most computers will label that uh, port effectively there, but some computers do not. So for example, my MacBook Pro here has four Thunderbolt ports on it, but none of those ports are labeled with one of those little lightning bolt adapters. So uh, my advice would be to get in touch with your computer manufacturer or check your computer specifications to make sure it has a Thunderbolt 3 port on it uh, before moving forward with your purchase of a Thunderbolt dock. Uh, one other thing that you have to think about is that if you have an older computer that has Thunderbolt 1 or 2, uh, it is not compatible with this Thunderbolt 3 dock. So you'll need to get a docking station that works with that older version of Thunderbolt. And while the Thunderbolt dock is compatible with Mac and Windows, it is not compatible with Chrome OS and Chromebooks at the moment. So even though uh, some of these Chromebooks are now coming with these USB Type-C connectors like this one here, uh, these will not work with that Thunderbolt dock. You'll probably want to look at the SD 4600P, which is a similar dock running with USB Type-C, and we covered that in a prior video in the series here. Uh, likewise, if you have an older laptop with the standard USB connectors, uh, you can't just get an adapter to work with the Thunderbolt dock. You will need to uh, get a dock designed specifically for those older ports, uh, like the SD3500V here that we also covered in a prior video. So let's see how this works in practice. We'll take my MacBook Pro out here first, and we'll set it down on the desk. And I'm just going to take the Thunderbolt cable from the dock and plug it in here. And uh, we'll hear that uh, Mac already ding to indicate that it's getting enough power to charge itself and power itself. And now what will happen next is these displays will take over. Now what I did to hook the displays up was I uh, attached a DisplayPort cable to the DisplayPort for one of these displays. And the other one, because we are using a Mac, I am using a USB-C to HDMI adapter through that daisy chain port we talked about earlier. So this will work not only with Thunderbolt and USB-C devices, but also display adapters. And now you can see we've got uh, the laptop display running here along with another display. But you'll notice things are a little out of order here. It's going to the laptop display first and then uh, over to this display. So we're going to reset that right now in the settings. So we're going to load up the system preferences on this Mac now and go over to displays. And inside of there, you're going to see an option for arrangement. And then you'll see kind of a virtual representation of your displays inside of this little control panel. And I'm going to back out to our uh, larger view here. And when I click on this rightmost box here, you can see that the border is lighting up red to indicate that this box is this display. And this one is in the right spot. It's on the end here, and I want to leave that there. But the display in the middle is not this display right now. It's the MacBook's own display, and I want to change that. So what I'm going to do here is just take this middle one, which is the MacBook display, 
and move it over here to the end. Now what will happen is the screen will go dark for a quick second and then when it comes back everything will be in the proper order. So I can take this window here and drag it all the way through like so. So now we've got the order uh, set up properly here. Another thing I can do here because the Mac is plugged in and video is flowing and power is going here, I can just shut the lid on this and uh, just use these two displays on their own. And what's really cool about this is that you could come home and just plug your MacBook in, uh, your keyboard and mouse will be connected up to the dock and you can get going again. Uh, the arrangement here was off, but once you set that arrangement once, it remembers it every time you plug it in after that. So uh, there you go. Everything is working uh, really cool with a single cable here, power, video, data, and uh, it even works with 4K displays running at 60 hertz each if you want that. Again, another reason why to look at the Thunderbolt dock over a USB-C dock, especially with a Mac. And if you are experiencing flickering or seeing that your display is not running at 60 hertz, check your monitor settings and ensure that you have DisplayPort 1.2 enabled. Now I'm going to plug in a Windows laptop next and see how it works with that. So I've got the Windows laptop now connected up to the dock. I did have to move it a little bit to get that cable within reach. Uh, this might be one reason to get that uh, Visa mount for the back of your monitor so it's always in a good spot. And what I'm going to do here is just show you what the configuration process is on Windows because you will get uh, sometimes the security notification that you can see on the lower right hand portion of your screen. So I'm going to click OK here and I'm going to click on yes. And what we want to do is give the computer access to uh, the dock here for all of its features. So we do need to wait for this little message to pop up here. And uh, we've got the Kensington Products Group SD5200T. I'm going to go over here and click on always connect. And when I do this, this will enable all the different parts of the dock that we want to use, like its uh, Ethernet port and some of the USB ports as well. Now that setting is a one-time thing if you set it to always connect. It will remember the dock the next time it is plugged in, uh, but that is something you'll probably encounter on Windows. Another thing you're going to encounter on Windows is that not all laptops support displays in the same way. Uh, so this laptop does support having two external displays plus the internal one working, but different manufacturers will support display over that Thunderbolt port in different ways. So that's another good reason maybe to check with your computer manufacturer first so you can know what to expect when you hook the dock up to your computer. Another factor on Windows to think about is power consumption. So uh, the power adapter on this Dell uh, requires 130 watts of power to uh, run it at full performance and charge the battery. Uh, the dock only outputs 85 watts. So in the case of this laptop, we might see reduced performance or we might see that uh, it's not charging the battery or maybe using the battery a little bit while we're using the computer plugged in with that single cable. So for larger laptops, that require more than 85 watts of power, you might want to still use the power adapter that came with your computer. But many smaller ultrabooks and lightweight laptops typically require uh, under the 85 watts that this dock can provide, and those should be able to get the full power. Uh, the best way to check is to look on the power adapter itself. And you can also adjust the display order like we did on the Mac a few minutes ago. You can see that I can't get this window to move to the left because it is uh, in this wacky order here. So what I'm going to do is just go over to uh, this display here on the end. I'm going to right click and go over to display settings. And when I do that, I'll have a representation here very similar to what we saw on the Mac of my three displays. Now what I'm going to do here is click on identify. And you can see this is three, this is two, and this is one. And you can see right now that the laptop display is in the middle and display three is on the left. We want display three to be on the right. So I'm going to grab this and just move it over here. And then we'll just get it uh, arranged here in such a way. And I'll go back to this screen, uh, click apply. And now you can see that uh, everything has been readjusted and is properly flowing here. So very similar method here on Windows for uh, adjusting your display to get everything in the right order. But uh, overall, this is working just as well here on Windows as it did on the Mac. We've got display, full USB with our keyboard and mouse and everything, uh, along with power going to this particular laptop as well. And again, single cable, very, very convenient for uh, getting your laptop to work like a desktop when you are at the office or in your home. So that's going to do it for this look at the SD5200T from Kensington. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold-level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast.
Chris Allegretta, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.